Hello friends, I am so glad you're here. If you're new, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I enjoy sharing all things DIY and decorating. And if you enjoy those things too, then stick around. If you like what you see, then please subscribe, like, and comment. I would also like to give a huge heartfelt thank you to my subscribers and just let you know how much I truly, truly appreciate all of your sweet, kind comments. Now this week we are going to be updating my back patio. It's looking kind of shabby and not in a good way. So we're going to head out there and I'm going to show you the before so you can see how awesome the after turned out to be. I also want to say I learned something really big this week. Before you start painting your outdoor furniture with your YouTube friends, you should always check the weather report. Just saying. It's just time to clean things up, freshen things up, replace these pillows. I'm going to recover those. Clean this up a bit. We love being out here. Obviously the lizards do too. Because it's just nice. We love being back here on our patio. But things have been faded by the sun. We've got pollen everywhere. This is going to get cleaned up. And I'll also be recovering the chairs. And painting them again too. It's been a couple of years. your other hand out of the way so if you slip you don't hurt yourself. Just dig in up underneath those staples, lift them all up, and then with your needle nose just pop them out. All right now that I have all of the fabric removed from the cushions you can see that the original fabric has just a little bit of mildew on it. It is very humid here in Northeast Florida where I live. So I will just be spritzing these down and this is nothing but straight white vinegar and letting them air dry out here. And if I need to come back and scrub them down again, I will. But white vinegar is a great solution for just spraying those mildewed areas down on your outdoor patio furniture. And then I'm just gonna let it air dry over here in the sun. Then I'll be moving on to painting our chairs. Whew, it is hot out here. I went to go pick my groceries up, came home to get started on the painting, and it is hotter now than it was before I left. So I had to throw my hair up in a little turkey tail. It also looks like it's gonna rain, so it's feeling a little more humid out here than it was. So I've got my paint stirred up. I'm gonna start with the Adirondack chairs, and I will be painting them in the Valspar Season Plus exterior paint in extra white, and this is a satin finish. And the satin finish makes it able to be wiped down a little more. Since these have arms on the chairs, they get a little, um, a little more wear and tear on them. I'm going to get started on this, and I'm watching lizards run across the back. I'm okay as long as they don't run over on me. And hopefully it doesn't rain on me. I like to start with the bottoms first. Oh, look at that. I love to paint. It takes it from something that looks all nasty and turns it into something fresh and clean in just a matter of seconds. Oh, I love that. And this paint goes on so well. I know no one sees the bottom of this, but it offers more protection to the wood. So I like to keep all the surfaces painted. It's starting to thunder a little bit. I'm hoping that it passes over and it doesn't rain, but 
there's a nice breeze and things have cooled off quite considerably so oh, just nice to just be out here and painting and making things look all nice and fresh and clean I love that Alrighty, I'm moving this operation indoors. I'm gonna go. Woo! I think I'm gonna go sew some pillow covers. I'm not gonna be out here painting anymore. But this all in here looks really good. And I still have all of this left to paint. And I've got all of these spots over here that I'm gonna be filling in with some wood filler. But. It's raining and yucky, and that's gonna be for another day. Now we need to fill in those holes in that Adirondack, and I'm gonna be using the plastic wood. I picked this up at Walmart, and then my little Bondo spreaders, and I picked these up at either Home Depot or Lowe's. And after I have finished using my wood filler, I am gonna put it in a plastic bag because if this stuff dries out, it's pretty useless. So we're going to fill the holes, let it dry, sand it down, and get that painted. I'm just gonna take my Bondo spreader and put just the tip of it in there. Come back over here and put a little bit in that hole and just squish it all down. Keep squishing until you get the hole filled in. And you can see I still have a divot in the middle there. So that tells me I need to add some more. So you just want to keep adding your filler until your hole is even with your surface. And now you can see when I scrape across the surface now, it's all filled in and smooth. It may be a little difficult to see on the actual holes here itself, but this particular wood putty that I use it looks pink when you apply it, and then as it dries, it turns that natural color. So you can see here, it's starting to dry on the outside, and it's still pink in the middle on all of these here. Once that inner area there turns natural, like the rest of it, then that lets me know it's dry and it's ready to sand. It's raining again. At this point, I don't even know if I'm gonna laugh or cry, but you know what? The show must go on. So, I've painted most of this chair, but I am going to do the top. I like this little triangle-shaped pointed brush, and it is a zebra. It helps if I hold it the right way. It's a zebra brush, and I just really like the way it just gets into those spaces there really, really well and gives such really good, quick, beautiful, even coverage. This is the Rust-Oleum Chalked in Linen White. Love this stuff. I pick it up at Home Depot. And I could have sanded this down and gotten all those little divots out there, but it's patio furniture, so... It is okay. Now smooth all this out. I love this brush. And it works really well when you're doing spindles too. Just coming down and they've got a little twist to them. This brush really, really helps to get in there and get those little details and paint smoothly onto those spindles. Okay, you can see that the color inside has now changed. So now, we're just gonna lightly hit it with some sandpaper here. It feels good. And then we'll be ready for paint. Just taking this smaller brush to be able to fill that in and not have so much excess paint on the edge there. I know the lighting is not the best, so you know what's going on. One more day of rain, but I have to keep pressing on. 
Okay friends, we are now ready to start recovering these cushions. Now because I have recovered these many, many times, I know that having two and a half yards of 45 inch wide fabric is going to give me enough of this particular design. And look how cute and fun this is. This pattern is nice and random. It doesn't matter if I hold it this way, this way, it doesn't matter. It's just going to have this large all over repeat. So I know that that's going to give me enough fabric to recover these. However, if I wanted to use something such as this or even something with stripes, if it has an obvious pattern that needs to go one way, you will need more fabric in order to match up that pattern. Now, if you're not sure how much fabric that you're going to need for your cushions, this is what I would suggest. You want to take your cushion and you're going to lay it out on a piece of poster board and you're going to trace it. I would also suggest adding extra to that width to cover whatever fabric that you're going to need to pull up on the sides. So, I take my cushion and I lay my tape measure diagonally across that. Then you're going to pull up and see how much you need. I'm going to pull it over to where I've got enough of my tape measure up here that I know is going to be enough fabric to pull over and staple. So then take some straight edge, hold that at the corner, and when you set it down, let me walk around here, I can see that this is at three and a half inches. So I know once I've traced my pattern, for this particular depth of cushion, I'm going to need three and a half inches all the way around to make sure it's all covered. So make sure that you account for how thick your cushion is as well. So then once you've traced that pattern out and you've added your seam allowance, then just take it to the fabric store and they will be more than happy to help you figure out how much you're going to need for your project. So I have my cushion laid out on my fabric here, face down. So I'm going to take my water soluble marker. This is called Mark Be Gone. And once I mark it, I can just take a wet paper towel or a wet rag and wipe that off and all the marks are gonna be gone and it's not going to show up on my fabric. So I'm gonna take my edge here and make a mark at three and a half inches. And I'm gonna do the same to make sure that when I cut, my lines are straight. I can go ahead and I can cut along those lines and then I can use that as a pattern to cut the remaining pieces out. Only two more to go. So now that I've cut out all of my pattern pieces, it is time to get this fabric attached to our cushions. I have lined up the cushion in the center of my pattern here and now all I'm going to do is begin by pulling up and stapling and you want it to be a little tight but not too tight and put one in and then pull if I need to take it out to straighten up my pattern. I only have one staple in there and not a whole line. And I'm also being careful not to cover up the holes that I'm going to need to put the screws back in. Just going to turn it over and see if I like how the pattern is looking so far. And I do. So now I'm just going to go ahead and continue putting the staples in. And when I put my staples in, I like to go kind of one up, one down, one up, one down. That way they're not just in a straight line and it kind of helps to keep the fabric 
a little more tight. And check my work. Now it's time to get those corners done. I wanted to bring you in closer to show you how I do the curves. Stand it up, eyeball it from this way, pull it down, and you can see when I pull, you've got all of this here, but when I pull it, it instantly smooths all of that out. So I'll take my fingers up underneath here and make some pleats. Turn it over. Add some staples. I like to do the center first and then smooth out the sides. We've got this right here. Smooth it. Pull it. Flip it. And staple it. right here. Pull it, smooth it, pleat it, flip it, and staple it. Oh, I didn't finish this side. Oh my goodness. I guess I got happy doing the curves here and I didn't even finish stapling. Hmm, let me, let me do that. So you can see our edges are nice and smooth. We took our time to just get all of the fabric all smoothed out, all stapled down really well, and it just looks gorgeous. Now just trim off the excess. So glad it quit raining and the birds are all happy. The geese are all honking it up out there. And the Adirondacks are finished painting. I finished painting these. The table is finished. Now what I'm gonna do is take this Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Spray and I'm going to do these parts of the chair that get the most handling on them. That's where it's most prone to the paint chipping off. And then I'll also be doing here along the bottom where people put their feet. I'm gonna be taking this Scotch Guard, and it's a water shield and also a UV protector. And I'll be spraying down our cushions here before I reattach the seat bottoms to the chairs. So I don't get overspray everywhere. I've just taken a piece of a cardboard box so I can spray and the sealer and the clear coat isn't gonna get everywhere. And to get the front of it, I'm just gonna hold this back behind it and just spray it that way. I'm going to do that on the remaining chairs as well. You want to make sure that you shake the can really well to evenly distribute this product. You want to make sure that you have something to protect your surface. You don't want to get this product on anything other than the fabric. So when you spray here, you're going to come back and overspray just a little bit so that way you get a complete coverage as you go back and forth over the area. You don't want to saturate it, but you do want to make sure that you've got good coverage. And it has quite the odor. That's why you definitely want to do this outside. So now that I have that one done, I'm gonna spray the others down. And once they're dry, we will be ready to attach these to the seat bottom. Okay friends, to get these seat bottoms attached, what I do is, first of all, I lay the seat bottom down. Then I take the chair, 
and it is easier to do this on an elevated surface so you can see better. I'm gonna lay it on top of the seat bottom. And I know you're not gonna be able to see from there, but I'm going to be aligning these up with the holes in the chair where the screws go. It takes a second to get all four of them lined up properly. I take and I don't insert them all the way I just put the screw in and I don't screw it down just yet okay so now that I have all four of them in there now I'm gonna go back and tighten them all down turn this thing over oh my goodness Look how pretty these are gonna be. I can't wait till I get it all finished. Now I just need to screw the rest of these down using that same process. Last one. And I have three screws. I'm gonna have to look around and find the other screw. Well, hmm. Here's one of our little new duck families. The babies are getting so big. I'm a mother ducker. I like to feed ducks, and that's a reason why I won't be putting a rug out here, because they come up here and they're going to poop. But look how cute they are. Let me see if I can zoom in better. Look at them. So cute. We've got the cushions installed on the seat bottoms there on the little dinette set and it looks adorable. So now we've got to recover these tired pillows that were on the Adirondacks. So I have enough scraps left over from the seat bottoms that I'm going to cover and make two more of these little lumbar pillows. And then to recover these, I will be using the Waverly this is a fat quarter bundle that you'll find in the pre-cut fabric area. And it is just going to coordinate. There's so many cute little patterns there. And they're gonna coordinate so nicely with this fabric and just pull out that little aqua color there in the flower. So I think that is just gonna be adorable. I want mine to fit a little more snugly, so I'm actually gonna cut mine at 18 by 18 so it fits really snugly when I go to put this cushion inside. I'm gonna go give these a quick press and then we'll get started with our pillows. Now that we have everything pinned up, we are ready to get stitching. I am going to be using a quarter inch seam and I will be using my presser foot as my seam guide and stitch all the way around on three sides until I come back up over to this side. Then we will clip our corners, turn it inside out, give it a press and we'll be ready to put our cushion in. After stitching up your seams, they're still not quite pressed out really well. It just doesn't give a clean edge. So what I like to do is use this handy dandy little gadget called a pressing ham. And I got this off of Amazon. And what you do, you just push that into your stitched item. And then when you press your seam out, and I have steam in here because this is cotton, I wanna steam that edge. It just opens up that seam and just makes it lie so flat and so nice. So I'm gonna take just a few minutes to press my seams so they look nice and neat and finished. What I did for the bottom is I tucked in that flap and then took a giant safety pin and just pinned it at the bottom. So that way I can just remove the safety pin and toss this cover in the wash. So we have our 18 inch pillows completed here. And now I'm gonna make the little lumbars that's gonna sit in front of them out of the rest of this fabric that we have left over from the seat cushions of the chair bottoms. So 
I've measured my pillow and I need to cut six pieces, 13 by 17, and stitch those up and stuff them with some polyfill. Now that these are all stitched and pressed, I will be stuffing them with the polyfill. After I get these all stuffed, then I'm gonna take them back to the sewing machine one last time and I will be stitching this edge closed and we are finished with our sewing projects for the day. Our family is really just filled with crafty people. My father-in-law made these Adirondack chairs for us years ago, and we just love them. And we love you too, Pops. Mwah. ready to enjoy this patio with a big old glass of iced tea. Come back next week for more kind of shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. And until then, my friends, be blessed.